If you were to light a second sun in our solar system, the space around it would remain perfectly black. And the reason for this defies our intuition. We instinctively feel that more light should equal a brighter environment, that this vast cosmic darkness is simply a canvas waiting to be painted. But the truth is far more profound. The answer isn't about the power of the light source, but about the staggering, almost perfect emptiness of the space it travels through. The darkness of space isn't an absence of light, it's an absence of things. To understand this, we have to completely change how we think about light itself. We see our sun, a colossal furnace blazing in the sky, and we see the planets, the moon, and asteroids it illuminates. But between these celestial bodies lies an impenetrable blackness. Why? Because we mistakenly think of light as something that fills a space. Imagine a completely dark room. If you spray a can of paint in it, the paint will fill the air and coat every surface. Light doesn't work that way. Light is not paint. It's a messenger. It's a stream of countless tiny particles, photons, traveling in a perfectly straight line at the fastest speed possible. A photon will travel invisibly, for millions or even billions of years, until it physically collides with something. An eyeball, a planet, a dust particle. Only at the moment of impact does the light reveal itself. It's like throwing a ball in the dark. You don't see the ball's journey through the air. You only know it's there when you hear it hit the wall. The sunlight in space is that ball in mid-flight, and the immense void of space is a room with almost no walls. The reason you can see a bright, beautiful blue sky above you right now is the perfect demonstration of this principle. The sky isn't blue because the air itself is blue. It's blue because of what's in the air. Earth's atmosphere is a thick, protective blanket filled with trillions upon trillions of molecules. Nitrogen, oxygen, water vapor as well as countless specks of dust and pollen. When sunlight enters our atmosphere, this dense field of particles acts like a cosmic pinball machine. The photons of light, especially the blue and violet wavelengths, crash into these molecules and are scattered in every direction. This process is called light scattering. Because blue light is scattered more effectively than other colors, our sky is essentially saturated with this deflected blue light from every direction, creating the beautiful azure dome we see. Without Earth's atmosphere, our sky would be as black as the sky on the moon. Astronauts on the lunar surface can see the sun blazing in a completely black sky, even during their day. That's because the moon has virtually no atmosphere. There's nothing to perform this light scattering. The sunlight travels from the sun, hits the lunar dust at their feet, and bounces into their eyes. But if they look up, there's nothing between them and the distant stars for the light to interact with. It's a direct illustration of the reason space is a black void. Light needs a medium to become visible as ambient brightness. The vastness between planets is an incredible vacuum, far emptier than any we can create on Earth. It's so empty that the photons from our sun can travel for millions of miles without hitting a single thing. So, the sunlight is definitely there, racing through the solar system. We just can't see it until it hits something like Mars or Jupiter and reflects back to our eyes. If this explanation of light scattering and why our sky is blue just helped you see our world a little differently, a simple click on the like button helps that understanding reach others who are just as curious. But this brings up a much bigger, more mind-bending question, okay? The space between planets is dark because it's empty, but the universe isn't empty. It's filled with stars, billions of them in our galaxy alone, and hundreds of billions, maybe even trillions of other galaxies. If you look at any patch of the night sky, no matter how small, you should, in theory, be looking directly at a star. So why is the night sky dark? This isn't a new question. It's a deep cosmic mystery that puzzled astronomers for centuries, and it has a name, Olber's Paradox. First formally stated by the German astronomer Heinrich Wilhelm Olbers in the 19th century, the paradox lays out a simple, logical argument that seems to completely contradict what we see every night. The argument goes like this. If the universe is infinite, eternal, and uniformly filled with stars, then no matter where you look in the sky, your line of sight should eventually end on the surface of a star. Distant stars would appear fainter, of course, but there would be more of them in that distant shell of space. The math showed that these two effects should cancel each other out perfectly. The result? The entire night sky should be as bright as the surface of the sun. Every single point should be blazing with light. There should be no night, no cosmic darkness only an eternal, blindingly white sky. 
And yet, when we look up, we see the opposite, a few pinpricks of light in an overwhelming ocean of black. This is what is Olber's paradox. So, why the night sky is dark with infinite stars? The answer is that one or more of the assumptions in the paradox must be wrong. And it turns out, they are. The resolution to this profound paradox lies in two of the most groundbreaking discoveries in the history of astronomy, explained simply. The first is that the universe is not infinitely old. It had a beginning. Through meticulous observation and calculation, we know the universe burst into existence in the Big Bang approximately 13.8 billion years ago. This fact alone deals a major blow to the paradox. Since the universe has a finite age, the light from stars that are incredibly far away from us simply hasn't had enough time to complete its journey and reach our eyes yet. There is a cosmic horizon, a boundary to the observable universe. We can only see light from objects within 13.8 billion light years of us, because that's how old the universe is. Any star beyond that horizon is invisible to us, not because it's too faint, but because its light is still in transit. It's like seeing a lightning flash in the distance. You see the flash instantly, but you have to wait for the sound of the thunder to reach you. The light from the most distant stars is thunder that we are still waiting to hear. This alone explains a great deal of the darkness. But there is a second, even more critical piece to this puzzle, and it involves the very fabric of space-time itself. The universe is not static. We live in an expanding universe. In the 1920s, astronomer Edwin Hubble observed that distant galaxies are all moving away from us, and the farther away they are, the faster they are receding. This isn't because we are at the center of some great explosion. It's because the space between everything is stretching. Imagine baking a loaf of raisin bread. As the dough rises, every raisin moves away from every other raisin. From the perspective of any single raisin, all the others appear to be moving away from it. This is what's happening to our universe. This expansion has a profound effect on the light traveling through it. As light waves journey across billions of light years of stretching space, the waves themselves get stretched out. This stretching shifts the light towards the red end of the spectrum, a phenomenon called cosmological redshift. For the most distant galaxies we can see, the ones receding from us at incredible speeds, their visible and ultraviolet light has been stretched so much that by the time it reaches us, it's no longer visible light at all. It has been shifted down into the infrared microwave and radio parts of the spectrum, which are invisible to our eyes. So, much of the energy from the farthest reaches of the cosmos is still arriving, but it's in a form we cannot perceive without special instruments. The famous cosmic microwave background radiation, the faint afterglow of the Big Bang that permeates all of space, is the ultimate example of this. It was once incredibly high energy light, but 13.8 billion years of cosmic expansion has stretched it into low-energy microwaves. We are literally bathed in the light of the creation of the universe, but we perceive it as cold, dark emptiness. So, the darkness we see is the combined result of these cosmic truths. It's a story told in the negative space. The space between planets is dark, because it's a near-perfect vacuum. A light in a vacuum travels unseen. And the vast space between galaxies is dark because the universe is young and the light from its most distant shores either hasn't reached us yet, or it has been stretched into invisibility by the relentless expansion of the universe itself. The darkness is not an absence of information. It is the information. It tells us that our universe has a history, a beginning. It tells us that space itself is dynamic, not static. Every time you look up at the night sky, you are not looking at an empty void. You are looking at the evidence of the Big Bang, at the signature of an expanding universe and across a chasm of time so deep that the light from the other side is still on its way. The darkness is a tangible presence, a historical record of everything that is and was. It's the distance between things, and the time it takes for their stories to reach us.